y'all and welcome to the crazy sock lady youtube channel my name is Kay. this is my youtube channel where i share all about my knitting and crafting adventures today is thursday january 28th it is a little after 9 30 in the morning the kids are off to school we've had company this week and they have headed back home eric is working from home today so i'm not here completely alone today but i am enjoying a coffee from Winans, which is one of our favorite local places. Enjoying an iced mocha with almond milk, dark chocolate, and a latte. So good. <laughs> so I've got a very full episode for you guys today. I've got some finished objects, works in progress, quite a few things that have come in the mail that I can't wait to share with y'all. So I hope that you have your coffee or your beverage of choice you're making and you are ready to jump right in. Find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the Crazy Sock Lady, and we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. I will have links to everywhere that you can find me, as well as show notes, which will include links to project pages, links to shops that I talk about, etc. They will be right down below this video in the down bar the description box so like I said today we've got finished objects two I thought I was gonna have three but I didn't get it done this morning so we have two finished objects I think three or four works in progress I have a couple of things that I've blocked to talk about a new way of blocking to talk about we're just going to dive right in with finished objects so the first one this will also be talking about the new way of blocking things that is new to me, not new overall, but new to me way of blocking things. I finished Wyatt's Christmas stocking. Lean back here so you can see it all. <laughs> I finished this last week, got it blocked over the weekend. I am so thrilled with how it turned out you guys a close-up here of all of the color work so the pattern that I used for this is ginger mint by Ursula Almeida I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly so I apologize if I'm not but I will link the project page below and you can find the pattern through that such a fun pattern this is fingering weight she does have worsted weight um, color work stockings as well but i am such a lover of fingering weight that that's what i chose to do so this is all fingering weight it's all knit picks palette and the colors the red is pimento the gray is ash and then this main color is just bare just their bare palette so I steam blocked this. Oh, I did want to mention I used a 2.75 millimeter needle, which is what is called for in the pattern. I steam blocked this. I have never steam blocked anything. That is what the pattern recommended. So I asked on Instagram, okay, y'all that are more experienced with color work, steam block or soak. A lot of people said steam blocking will prevent the colors bleeding. So like this red could bleed into the white and turn it pink. Um, so they said that would prevent that, that it dries quicker. I, I can't remember. Those were the two that really stick out in my mind. So, and then some people say they did color or soak their color work the normal way. That's how I've always blocked things. It's just soak it and then lay it flat to dry. I decided to steam block this. I thought if I steam block it and I don't like how it turns out, I can always just then soak it and block it in my normal way of doing things. Steam blocking it definitely straightened and smoothed it out as far as like the heel was definitely kind of all bunched up. The toe was bunched up right in this area was kind of bunched and it smoothed out just overall the stocking and the stitches. I was hoping that the white would bloom just a bit more to cover up where I had caught my floats in the, the long um, 
spots there where I had to carry the gray behind the white. It didn't, not a huge deal, but that's the only thing I was disappointed in with the steaming it is that I feel like if I would have soaked it, it would have relaxed, relaxed the stitches even more and then maybe that white would have bloomed a little bit more. I'm no expert, so I don't really know, but overall I'm super pleased with how steaming it worked. It did the trick and I think it looks amazing. So that is finished object number one. And because somebody will probably ask to see the floats, I always do think it's kind of fun to see what it looks like on the inside. So there are my floats. I've had a lot of people ask if I'm going to line this, like sew a lining. I don't sew. <laughs> I probably could if I really tried to. I have before, but I don't enjoy it. I have zero desire to sew a lining for these. I just want to knit them. <laughs> but I do, um, some people did say they've done linings for the inside of theirs. They recommend it because we, if you put um, stuff in here, then it can stretch it out. Like I said, I just have zero desire to sew a lining for the inside of these. So I don't know. I may regret that come Christmas. We'll see. <laughs> okay, next finished object is a pair of socks for Eric. I gifted these to him on Monday for his birthday. And I knit these out of pumpkins and wool yarn in her vineyard sock set. And I knit the shallow sock pattern, which is one of my designs. It's just a super simple knit pearl textured pattern. I did two rounds of the contrast on the cuff. I knit one pearl one cuff size medium, US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. And I did the contrast for the heels and toes. Same for both socks. And Eric's actually, he hasn't worn them yet, but he said he was gonna wear them today. So I said, let me show them really quickly, and then you can wear them. I love this colorway. I love the wine kind of Merlot Cabernet color right in here. So pretty. And I did block these. I don't typically, but the pattern, the nature of this pattern kind of pulls the front in. So I thought, well, I'm just going to block them so that when he opens them, the presentation is a little bit nicer. And it did just make them look very narrow and small. And I thought, I know they're going to fit. So <laughs> let's make them look like they're going to fit. All right. Oh, I do have, I was going to show you guys, I also steamed a little backstory on this. So I had the Trilogy Yarns Advent Calendar in December, and there was a blanket pattern that came with it. I had started it, but then couldn't keep up with doing the squares that you had to do every day. So I kind of put it to the back burner and thought, well, I'll get back to it and finish that blanket later. I got back to it. <laughs> I thought I'm gonna seam up the four squares, or I think I had to finish a square. I think I had to finish one and then I was ready to seam four of them together. And then I thought, then I can just pick up these squares and work on them every now and then and seam the four together as I go. So here's the four that I seamed together. It does look super cute. I love the blanket pattern, but I know me and I'm not going to want to seam these together. I did not enjoy seaming these together. <laughs> I don't enjoy seaming anything together to tell you the truth. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've just decided this, this is all that's getting seamed together are these four that are done. And this will now be something that I can just put on the table to put a vase of flowers on or a candle or something like that. And then I do have three other squares. 
I'll link the project page below, which has the blanket pattern. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. The squares are so much fun to knit. I just don't enjoy seaming things. <laughs> That's being a little bit lazy maybe, but I just don't enjoy it. So I have three that look just like this. And these will now be coasters or something like that. I'm actually going to put one on my nightstand because I have some essential oils right by my nightstand. So then I can set the bottles on here because I have had, um, where I've used a couple of them. I've not really like spilt it, but I've gotten a little bit when I've taken the cap off and set it down on the top of my nightstand and it gets all gunky and I'm afraid it's going to ruin the top of my nightstand. So I'm going to put one of these up there to kind of catch any of that oil. But yes, yeah, so I'm a failure at that blanket. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's a failure though. Let's take that back because I enjoy doing those and I'm just moving forward away from it. Do what brings me joy. I know I would not enjoy seaming those together, so I'm not going to force myself to do it. I will enjoy the yarn in other ways. That's it for finished objects. So works in progress, we'll move into those with the one that I was hoping would be a finished object to show today. It is in a bag from Stolen Minutes. And it is my Share a Pair socks. Do I have, Oops. grab my sock blocker. I have one sock done. the first one. So the yarn is from Mandy's Makings. And it's her share a pair sock set and the colors are festive holiday and deck the halls. There's the two. I'm already done with the pink on the second sock. So that's what's left. And these, I think she sold out in her shop as of this morning. Um, but you can head over and check her out. Give her a follow. The share a pair sock sets, you get two sets. Each set has 50 grams of each skein. So the idea is you get it, you share it with your knitting, crocheting, BFF, and then you can you can knit along or crochet along together on a project. So Amanda of Mandy's Makings was working on this along with me. And here's where I'm at on this second sock. I'm at the toe. That is all that I need to do on this one is the toe. So I am using nine inch circulars. These are chow go, chow go, chow go, <laughs> chow go. The red lace. I love, love, love these nine inch circulars. I have really been, I haven't really worked with them for a while, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it on this sock. And I think I'm going to be working on them more here in the near future because I have a couple of things I want to cast on. You can see I, since it's 50 grams of each skein, I wanted to make sure I used both skeins and then, then I had enough to do a pair of socks. So the pattern that I'm following is just vanilla socks on nine inch circulars. That's one of my um, patterns. I will have the project page linked below with a link to the pattern. And I decided I would alternate what I'm using for heels, toes, and cuffs. So this one I alternated or I used the pink for heels, toes, and cuffs. And then this one I used the speckled. And then I just striped in the other collar and I alternated every two rounds. So two rounds for this one, it was two rounds in the pink and then two in the speckled all the way down. I did 50 rounds for the leg and a heel flap and gusset. And then just the rounded toe that's in the pattern. These have seriously been an absolute joy. I will mention that I did go down a needle size to a two millimeter, right? What is this? I'm, yeah. Yes, a US zero two millimeter, four nine inch circulars. I have found that for some reason, 
when I use nine inch circulars, I think it's how delicately you have to hold them because they're so much smaller. I have found that my gauge changes, it's looser. So I went down to a zero, US zero. Gauge is the same as what I get on a US one when I knit DPNs, Magic Loop, any other method. For some reason, I have to go down with a nine inch. And I'm loving the fabric that I got in doing that because the nine inch circulars, when I did those for socks before, my socks were always just a little bit too big. So this worked out great. I will finish this today for sure. And I will be casting on and knitting along with Mandy on another share a pair sock set very soon. I cannot wait. That has really been so much fun. Oh, and I should mention, cause a lot of people always asked, how can you avoid a jog when you stripe socks? So there is always the helix method of knitting in the round. I am not doing anything special for these socks. I just want to knit. I don't want to have to overthink it and worry about it. And I'm not bothered by a jog in my socks. If it's a sweater or something bigger like that. Okay. I will do the helix method or something socks. Not that bothered y'all. I just want to knit them. So here, this is the side where I'm pulling the yarns up through the inside. I'm just carrying it. I don't feel that you can even really see something. Maybe if you sit there and look super close, it's fine. I'm just leaving the yarns and then carrying them on the inside of the sock like this. This is what it looks like on the inside. You can see right there. But when I come to like, um, when I finish a pink, two stripes in the pink, and then it's time to drop that and pick up the speckled from the two rounds below, I just make sure that, because some people have said my stitches look really messy there. Um, I don't know how to make it look any neater. I just make sure that the stitch, it's kind of hard to explain without showing you, but when you're pulling that yarn up, on the inside over the two rounds, you want to look at that last stitch you did in that yarn that you're pulling up. Make sure one, you don't want it to be way too tight. You don't want it to be way too loose. You want it to look like the stitches next to it. You want the tension on the size of that stitch to be like its neighbors on both sides. So you just pull it up, make sure it's the same. If it's too tight, just pull that stitch a little bit and it'll loosen it up. You just want it to look like a normal tension and then don't yank on that first stitch that you're going to knit with that yarn you've pulled up. Just do your normal tension and then kind of check again to make sure that that stitch below did not get pulled too tight. It sounds like it might not be completely, don't have to think about it, but as you get in the rhythm, you just kind of double check that and it becomes part of the process. That's my tip. Um, there are ways, like I said, to avoid jogs, fancy things that you can do, but I'm not bothered. They're just for me and I don't care. <laughs> so that will be done today. I can't wait. They're so pretty. I love that yarn so much and I can't wait to knit another share a pair. Mandy does have a coupon code. It is crazy sock lady. That'll get you 15% off in her shop. I'll link it down below. And I meant to mention at the beginning of the episode, don't forget that there's the 20K giveaway that happened on episode 124. That's still open till next week. And then I will draw the winners and announce it on next week's podcast. So if you missed episode 24, head back, watch it, see how to enter for the 20K giveaway. All right, next work in progress. In another bag by Carrie of Stolen Minutes. It's Austin's stocking. Those of you that guessed, I would start off, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I would start Austin's stocking. You were correct. I just can't resist. I am having so much fun with these. I'm loving the idea of thinking that they could possibly do be done or at least the boys be done for next Christmas. And you guys are 
great with helping me justify casting on new things because so many of you said that you would look at the four stockings that I want to make for Wyatt, Austin, Eric, and myself as one big project. Not as four projects, but it's one project. So thank you for that because that's now how I'm looking at it. I'm still working on the one big project that was carried over from last year. Love it. Y'all are the best. <laughs> so here's Austin's stocking and I'll tell you about the pattern here in just a minute. I need to put some needle stoppers on here because I keep just about losing stitches. Okay. So this is another fingering weight Christmas stocking. Look at those trees. Oh, they're so cute. Has mountains, snowflakes, pine trees. Austin picked out this pattern for his. Using the same needles, 2.75 millimeter, correct? Yes. US 2, 2.75 millimeter. I am using my Haya Haya Sharp interchangeables. For this, it's on a 16 inch cord. The name of this pattern is Snowy Mountains Stocking. This is what it will look like. And it's this by the same designer, Ursula Almeida of She Thinks She Can Designs. And I'm using the same exact yarn. I do have links for the yarn that I'm using within the project page if you're interested in purchasing. They're all going to be the same color. I could, I thought about switching them up and maybe doing some green instead of the gray, but I just love the classic look of the red with the gray and the white. And I kind of want them all to match as far as the color scheme goes. So I'm just going to keep going with that. This has been my 30 minutes of knitting in the morning, which lately I've been getting up so early and having so much time in the morning that it's kind of turned into an hour of knitting, which I'm not complaining about at all. <laughs> Next work in progress is in this bag from my friend Jeanette. She does have a shop, but the when I checked, there was nothing in it, but I'm, I'll still link it down below in case you put, add some more stuff. This is Eric's Musselberg hat. The yarn that I'm using is, find the tag. It's in the very last pocket that I checked, that there was to check. This is by Breaking Yarn. And the colorway is Jane Margolis. It is on her quarter round fingering weight, which is 100% superwash merino wool. 438 yards to 100 grams. Here's the yarn. It is a gorgeous black. And here's my progress so far. <laughs> Not too big yet, considering how big it has to be, but I feel like that's pretty good because had I even started this last week? I don't think I had. Um, so yes, I'm doing the Musselberg hat by Isolde T. This is my second one and not my last. I have some yarn for a third one that I'll show you when we chat about mail. I love, love, love this pattern. So I, you do some increases. I did those. You're probably not going to be able to see them with this black yarn there. It starts here. You work your way out, do some increases, and then it is just basically a big sock. That's, that's how I'm thinking of it because it is just stocking up forever. It is so nice, so enjoyable. I am making the adult large, which is the size that I made myself. You tried mine on it fit. I'm getting the same gauge as last time, seven stitches per inch. That does matter in the pattern. I mean, you don't have to get seven stitches. I should clarify that. It tells you to do some increases until you can figure out what your gauge is and then it tells you how to knit the rest of your hat as far as how many stitches to increase to, how long to knit your tube, 
etc. So same gauge as the one I made myself. So it's going to be super simple. I just have to do it exactly how I did mine. Oh, the needles that I'm using, I started it on DPNs. And I'm using some Addy that I've had for ages. I don't even remember where I got these. It is a three millimeter needle. These are the DPNs that I used. And then the 16 inch circulars, it's the same thing, three millimeter. It's the Addy Natural. I think they're just bamboo. Yes, they are bamboo. And a 16 inch, can't remember if I said that. I have one more work in progress I'm gonna show you that I'm only showing you because maybe it will hold me accountable for working on it some more. This is in my Fringe Supply Co. Town Bag, I think was the name of this style. They no longer make bags, which is a total bummer because I love, love this bag. I wish I could get more. Okay, this is my Chevron Shenanigans. I haven't touched it since I don't even know when. Almost two weeks, maybe. But here it is. I am ready to add in, start striping in the third color, which will be this beauty right here. This is Emma's yarn, I believe. All of the colors for this are listed on the project page. This is a design by Stephen West. It is so enjoyable. I love it so much. I just haven't picked it up. I don't know what the deal is lately. I've gotten knitting time, obviously, but I maybe I just haven't had time where I feel like I can sit down and focus on something that needs more attention. Other than my 30 minutes of knitting, because obviously collar work needs attention, but other than that, I'm only working on mindless stockinette projects. I need to sit down and get some time to focus on this. So I'm showing this to hold myself accountable that next week I'm going to have started striping in the third collar. That's why you're seeing it. <laughs> Not because there's any project to show. Project, progress to show. Not enough coffee yet this morning. Okay, let me double check and make sure I have not forgotten anything. I don't think I've forgotten anything. That's it for finished objects and works in progress, but boy, oh boy, do I have some mail. Lots of mail. Okay. Last episode, I showed the 20K giveaway stuff and I had a gorgeous gradient set from a girl and her wool. Also in that package, she had sent me a sock set. And I got that after I had recorded last week. So that's why you only saw in the 20K clip the gradient and I didn't show the sock set last week. But I'm going to show it now. Oh, it's a beauty. Look at those colors. Just stunning. Don't focus on me, camera. So this is her graffiti colorway right here, the main skein. And then the mini is her golden hour. Perfect name. So pretty. The heat just kicked on again. I feel like it's going to run all day. It is so cold here, y'all. So cold. And it's snowing right now. They were treating the roads when I was out earlier. I don't think we're supposed to really get anything though until Saturday, they're saying maybe, what did Eric say? Three, five inches of snow Saturday, cross your fingers because I would love that so much. But yeah, they were treating the roads this morning. Don't know, but the heat was just on and it's already back on. I feel like it's gonna run all day long. Okay, anyways, a girl in her wool, this is her sock base, which is a four ply fingering, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The mini is 20 grams. 
I just need more hours in the day to knit y'all because I want to cast on all of the things and I know y'all can relate. <laughs> I just want to knit all of these beautiful things and I need more hours to do it. This is gorgeous. So I will have our shop linked down below. I also placed an order with Amanda of Mandy's Makings. I had been eyeing these in her shop for a little while and I finally just did it and ordered them and I have no idea what they're going to be in. If you have any ideas, let me know, but they are so pretty together. Look at those. I kind of wish I would have got more of this and done, I don't know what sweater, but got more of this blue and then use the white for like some collar work, like a fingering weight collar work sweater. I wish I would have thought about that and done that, but I don't know a pattern. <laughs> Help. What should I do with these? So this is Mandy's Makings. They are both on her 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering weight base. There's 415 yards to 100 grams. This is her Moscato colorway, the blue. And she put the most precious progress keeper on here. Oh, I love it so much. And then this is her Aw Naturel. Probably just a bear. I don't think it's dyed at all, but stunning. I think these will be so pretty in a project together. So help, let me know below what you think those should become. I should probably not put that over there. I've almost spilled my iced mocha on this. It would not have been all natural then. Okay, I also ordered a couple of cross stitch things. I've really been enjoying, I haven't worked on it too much since the last time you saw it, but I've been enjoying this kit that I have linked within the Amazon storefront link below. This is the You Are My Sunshine. That's what it will look like. And here's my progress so far. I've really been enjoying working on this here and there, and I've totally discovered that these types of cross stitch are my jam. Not a full covered picture. I just like the smaller with words and a little tiny picture. So I have the Zoo Lily app, and a lot of the times I'll put crafting stuff stuff up on there, as well as so many other things. I I get quite a bit of things from Zoo Lily but they had some cross stitch things. So I have three kits that I ordered. This one says it's a long stitch embroidery kit with pre-printed picture. So if I can find a link for these, I'll search around online, see if I can find a link. I will put them linked down below. I thought this was so precious, the little sheep, and would be perfect to hang up in my office. I've started hanging some stuff on the wall and I've put two shelves up, but I just thought this would be perfect to hang down here. Then this was just too sweet to pass up. It says waiting for a holiday is the name of this kit. There are some big snowflakes coming down now. If it's still snowing when I'm done, I'll take a little video. Then this is Sparrow, and it looks like it's snowing in this picture. So I picked those up. I have this dream of like, a, I have a tiny little space over here that has my yarn cave sign. And I would love to put some like this type of things around it. And then I have a couple of cards I would love to frame of sheep that have been sent to me. And then upstairs in the living room, I would love to have a wall, a gallery wall of cross stitch or embroidered pictures that I've done, which will take some time to fill that wall up. But I want it to be these small little, little pictures. So I'm really excited about those. I wanted to show you, I should have shown you this earlier when I talked about the steam 
steaming that I did on why it's stocking. But here's the steamer that I ordered because I had some people asked. So here is the steamer. It is just a handheld garment steamer. It is linked via the Amazon storefront link below. It worked great. Yika, Yika, Y-I-K-A is the brand. But like I said, linked down below. It did work fine when I held it this way because that was one thing that some people had asked. Worked great. And I think it was only 20 some, 30 some dollars. So I felt like that was a good price. I have one last thing that I received in the mail. So I was chatting with Molly of a homespun house week before last, it's been a couple of weeks ago. And she said she would love to send me some yarn for Eric's hat. And I had already had the breaking yarn on its way. So I said, well, Wyatt would like a hat too. So Wyatt picked out a colorway from her shop and I received a package from her with that yarn. So what Wyatt picked out for his Musselberg hat is the Ash colorway. Look how pretty that is. It is a gorgeous black tonal. So pretty. And this is on her soft sock fingering, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's perfect for Wyatt's hat. Then Molly also sent me a skein of her Little Spruce colorway. This is one of her new colorways. She just had a ton of new colorways come out. Look at all of that right there. So gorgeous. And then not only that, she totally spoiled me and sent a set of minis. <laughs> This is her Tranquility Minis collection. There are 10 10 gram minis on her soft sock base. Oh, did I say what base this was on? This was on her soft sock as well. So all of these are on her soft sock. Look at all of those. So gorgeous. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all of these. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is they would make a gorgeous pair of socks. But I don't know. They'll probably just go right here in the front of the cabinet so I can look at them for a little bit. Wyatt's hat will be cast on as soon as I finish Eric's hat. And this, this is getting cast on today. Yes, it is. I'm going to cake it up as soon as I get cleaned up from recording the podcast. And then I'm going to get those started. I'm also going to start, let me grab the yarn really quick. Another pair of socks for Eric. So this is Regia Perfect. He picked this yarn out a little while ago before I started the shallow socks for his birthday see what the color number is 07111 that's what the socks will look like so I'm gonna start these up today as well so that'll be two these are just gonna be plain vanilla socks cast on today and then they'll just get worked on here and there it's always great I think to have a couple of completely mindless projects ready to go cast on so that I can pick them up for car line knitting or just in the car knitting if Eric's driving. I love having that. So I think that wraps it up for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me for episode 125. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will see you next week for another episode. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.